Okay, well, as people continue to, um, to log on, we'll get started. My name is Jamie Zimron, and I'm a board member of Ike Extensions. Ike Extensions is sponsoring this program today, so welcome to everybody. So our program today uh, is about Udo Accelerator, as you all know, and we're really excited about the program. It grows out of last month's program that Ike Extensions sponsored our, as part of our Passion and Action Roundtable series. And the theme of our September Roundtable was rejuvenating Aikido. How can we extend Aikido's reach beyond the dojo, which is what Aiki Extensions is very concerned with, our training in the dojo, taking it out into the world, so on and off the mat. And how can we influence society in Aiki ways to make things better? Because as we know, the world is very in need of what O Sensei termed medicine for a sick world. World's literally sick during the pandemic, and there's just so many issues as we know. We're also concerned with how can we appeal to and reach out to younger people and communities not currently or commonly uh, being served by our dojos and by the Aikido world. So how can we bring about greater diversity, greater inclusion in Aikido, lower the median age on the mat, and juvenate, rejuvenate our practice, and up the presence of Aikido principles, practices, and creating what we like to call Aiki humans in every domain of life and, and field of, of society. So one of our roundtable speakers last month was Josh Gold Sensei. He's of course with us today. He's our featured speaker to go into much more depth about the really very exciting and bold Budo Accelerator program that he's co-founded and spearheading along with co-founder Mark Tursik, who's the chairman of the program. Josh is the CEO, Mark is here. We're gonna have the opportunity to hear from him as well. We also will have an opportunity, opportunity to hear from and meet some of the pioneering Budo Accelerator students and participants who have been going through some of the initial programs that have been testing and developing the program. So I think you'll be really inspired to meet them. So many of you know Josh Sensei is the executive editor of Aikido Journal. I think we all know him a very a big domo arigato, yeah, for taking the home of Aikido Journal upon Stanley Pran and Sensei's passing already four years ago, four and a half years ago in 2017. So not only has Josh continued this historical and archiving Aikido work begun by Stan Sensei, he's also been taking Aikido Journal in directions of not only Aikido history, but Aikido history currently in the making that it, so many people who are here today uh, on, on the Zoom, as well as you know, all over the world. We are making Aikido history and uh, you know, serving, having an Aikido journal serve as an agent of social change through um, the, uh, both the practice and practical evolutionary applications of, of O Sensei's art, the art of peace. So uh, thank you, Josh Sensei, for all the work you're doing. I think we all really appreciate you for that. Josh is also the chief instructor of Ikazuchi Dojo, which is in Southern California. It's a very progressive, innovative dojo in Southern Cal. <clears throat> and he incorporates his over three decades of training in Aikido, as well as cross training in Kali and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So he's, uh, the, the dojo is a really exciting place. Nice place to visit, yeah, Josh, <laughs> I'm hoping too soon. Uh, and he also leads presentations for Fortune 500 companies, as well as uh, at premier events and idea festivals. Budo <laughs> Accelerator is a very bold and ambitious nonprofit. It's a 501c3, little hint there for one way you can participate later, which is uh, through some contributions. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, Budo Accelerator has a very visionary mission and great plans to elevate youth that profoundly impact their lives, their leadership as they develop and to bring in youth who have been in perhaps underprivileged situations or may not have had the opportunity to, to train in Aikido and to use the art to forge a new generation of leaders through Aikido-based programs. We also have Mark Tursik here, we'll meet him more, but we're very blessed to have his presence. He's a busy man. He's the co-founder, as I said, of Budo Accelerator. He got his MBA from Harvard after graduating from Williams College, which is where, yay, Robert's got his arms up. He's located there and he teaches some really cool Aikido courses at Williams College. So that's just a, a really nice convergence. Mark is, uh, was a managing partner of Goldman Sachs and he was the CEO of the Nature Conservancy, which is of course the world's largest environmental nonprofit. He began training in Aikido when he was in 
Japan in 1980, had about a 40 year hiatus and he's back on the map, which is really cool. And he's the author of a very cool book that I'm hoping I'm gonna get a signed copy of after this. And the name of the book is Nature's Fortune, How Business and Society Thrive by Investing in Nature. I also just wanna briefly welcome our student guests who you will uh, be meeting today, Gonzalo, Nathan, Kiara, Aaron, and Diego. Josh Sensei will be introducing them. And so without further ado, let's all say onagashimasu to each other and to Josh Sensei. And nice deep centering breath. Open your hearts, open your minds. We are gonna learn so much today and find some ways to be involved as Budo Accelerator accelerates and develops. So Josh Sensei, onagashimasu, thank you for being here. Thanks everyone again for joining. And before we get started talking about Budo Accelerator, I did want to spend a minute or two talking about Aikido community demographics. At the Rejuvenating Aikido event that Aiki Extension hosted a few weeks ago, I shared a little bit of this information and uh, Jamie and Robert gave me some feedback that the group would be interested in learning a little bit more. I also think that this will give us some important context for the discussion about Budo Accelerator. First off, I'd like to make clear that the global Aikido community is vast and well organized. Uh, Aikido is practiced in over 140 countries around the world, and I know that there are well over a thousand dojos in the United States alone. And most of us who began practicing, we never stopped. We're, we're still in the art decades later. Uh, but somehow we lost a generation. And interest levels in Aikido have dropped precipitously since Google started publishing search trend data in 2004. And there's a very small number of teens and young adults that are active in Aikido right now. In the United States, 81% are over the age of 40 and only 2%, 2% are in the 13 to 25 age group. Now, internationally or globally, the numbers are looking a little bit better, but it, nevertheless, um, there's definitely a deficit in young people coming into the art of Aikido. There are some key demographic groups in America that are significantly underrepresented, specifically Latinos and African Americans. And we're not even close to gender parity in the art right now. 16% uh, of the United States Aikido community is women. Internationally, the number is, I think, around 17%. And across all age groups and genders, we're just not seeing a lot of young people or new people coming into the art here. So for every beginner who has two years or less experience, there are four senior level practitioners that have 16 or more years of training. And what this tells me is that the older generation stuck with Aikido, but where are all the young people? I can tell you that some dojos around the world have thriving groups of young people and they're doing amazing things. But on the whole, somehow we just couldn't find a way to connect with this generation of young people. And even with access to all the data that I have through Aikido Journal, I can't tell you exactly why this is. Uh, but I can tell you one way that I think we can change it, which is what we're here to talk about today. For those unfamiliar with Budo Accelerator, we're a new educational nonprofit, but I do think it's important to note, though, that we don't think of ourselves strictly as an Aikido-centric organization. We are a social impact organization first, but one that's powered by Aikido, or Budo more generally. We were founded in September 2019, and we've been working very hard since day one, but our students definitely make sure we have fun along the way. So let's talk a little bit about what we're about. A number of years ago, I did a Aikido Journal interview with Ellis Amder, and he said something that really stuck with me. He said that one of the core functions of Budo is to influence society. And when Mark Tursek and I were setting the vision for Budo Accelerator, I thought about this a lot. And we asked ourselves, how could we do something with Aikido that contributes to society in a really big way? Well, one way to do it is to elevate young people and to train them to be our next generation of leaders. And when I say elevate young people, I mean to do this in a very targeted way. We're committed to tackling important, well-defined and well-researched social challenges and creating impact that we can measure. We build our programs on these three pillars. So basically what we do is we use best practices for modern learning science, and then we build curriculum from the ground up that integrates directly with Budo training where the Budo practice activates and amplifies the effectiveness of both the curriculum and the mentor programs that we offer. And we use technology and media to tie everything together. These things support our program operations, recruiting efforts, mentor matching, and other key organizational functions. All right, so what have we done with this so far? 
Well, we planned on running a pilot program in the spring of 2020, and we ran right into the pandemic. We had to do a complete pivot, and then by early summer of 2020, we were ready to launch our first online program with 30 hours of curriculum that was designed by world-class experts in education, psychology, and Budo. So summer 2020, we ran a three-week-long session, three hours a day online. It went great. When this uh, session was done, we analyzed the data, optimized things, and then we did it again three weeks later. So we ran a second session with sort of like optimized and tuned curriculum, and we were doing some A-B testing as well, which we learned a lot from. We ran a program in winter of 2020. We ran a program in spring 2021, in which we partnered with three dojos in Canada, and we had over 50 students from around North America join this program. We learned a lot from, from this one. And we ran a program in summer 2021. And finally, we were able to do this in person. And we had a great time and we learned so much from our students uh, running this program. We're headquartered in Irvine. So we were really excited to partner with the Irvine Public Schools Foundation. They manage something like 15,000 enrollments uh, a year for after school and summer programs. They were very happy with what we did. Uh, so we look forward to growing with them over time. And their results were great. Every student improved in two or more of these key areas and most improved in every capacity that we measured. And I'm also very happy to see our students gain in these areas too. And this stuff is really important, not only for their future success, but for their quality of life right now. We'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later on in the discussion. But most importantly, our students love our programs, which makes me feel really, really good, but also it's really important because the impact that our programs make is totally irrelevant if nobody wants to show up. And so before we dive into an exciting new initiative that we're working on, I thought this would be a good time to meet just a few of our high school students. And uh, one of the things we do is we connect our students with mentors and advisors. And what we do is we teach the students how to make the most of those mentor relationships. And part of that is to show gratitude. Our students always create thank you videos for our speakers and mentors. So before we chat with some of the students in person, I wanted to show you one of these videos. This is a two minute video and it was made as a thank you to Mark Tersek from Kiara, who's with us here today. I learned a lot from Video Accelerator. One of my favorite parts of the program was seeing all of the activities and lessons we had about leadership. Another thing I really liked was the assertive communication exercises and especially as an international relations student, I know my future career paths will definitely be in a male-dominated work field. So with the assertive communication, I hope to be able to stand up for myself more and know and be confident in what I have to say it really does matter and put my own opinion forward in a well-collected manner. I also really enjoyed all the stress relief activities we had. The summer before my college year, I had to fill out all my college applications. Then it was waiting for my college acceptances. And now that I'm finally moving in, I found these stress relievers to be so helpful at all these different stages that I had to go through. And then another thing I really liked as well was all of the people that came in and gave us some talks. I always think it's so inspiring to be able to hear other people's stories, seeing where they came from and how they ended up to where they are now. But it lets me know that it is possible for me to work my way up to a good position and to reach a place where I'm happy with, with my life. Seeing everyone else accomplish their dreams and being able to do well in this world, it helps me feel a bit more comfortable starting to head on that road myself. I know during lockdown, it was really hard just being stuck inside the house all day and wondering when it would be possible to continue practicing Aikido. And thanks to the program, I was able to find many opportunities to continue it. And now I'm happy to say that I am a, I ranked third Q in Aikido and I have gotten my Hakama, which is just truly amazing for me. And these programs would have not been possible without you. You've really given me and lots of other kids such great opportunities and experiences through these programs. And I know we really all appreciate it. I hope to continue on with these programs and to see what else you and Josh have in store for us. I thought this might be a good time to introduce some of our students and uh, give them the opportunity to chat for a couple minutes. Maybe we can start with uh, Gonzalo. 
Okay, then. Hi, everyone. My name is Gonzalo Castro. I am 17 years old, and I, I am currently at, uh, I'm currently a senior in high school. Throughout my, uh, throughout my life, there has been many difficulties um, where things were times where I couldn't just like, you know, adapt or like, you know, bounce back from any troubles or problems I faced, with, which can either be um, through um, by, by family issues, school issues, or even life. I just didn't know how to adapt or like seek or seek help from others. And then later on, like during the pandemic, like I was before the pandemic, I was like, I was like in a deep, I was like in a very deep hole. And when I found out, and when I found out about this program, yeah, I thought this was, this, this is the program for me. When I joined, it was like a new life for me because all the, all the mentors speak, all the mentors that, that talked, all the people I met, they really show me, you know, advice and tips on how to get by in life and how to adapt throughout any difficulties or trouble I might come across with. Thank you so much for sharing, Gonzalo. So Nathan uh, is one of our Budo Accelerator students. He's from San Jose, California. He joined when he was in high school, and now I believe he is a first-year college student. He found us on Instagram. He has no prior Aikido experience, but he has done Taekwondo in the past, and he's actually a, he's been a Taekwondo competitor. So Nathan, I'll hand it over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, hope everyone's having a great day. So one of the main reasons I joined Buddha Accelerator was that uh, I'm a very I, I would consider myself a very devout martial artist. And so I wanted to explore other principles of martial arts, um, one of them being Aikido. And so coming from Taekwondo, I really um, didn't like the competitive atmosphere. I mean, at some points I did like it, but in some ways I, I felt like it made the sport kind of toxic and I didn't really like the environment. And so I thought I'd give Aikido a try and I was correct. I mean, um, just because there's so many um, older people, it's easy for me to ask um, for advice and to hear what they have to say about just life in general. And so one of the many things that Boot Accelerate excels at is just offering mentors and people that I can look up to. And so Josh has been really kind and has been um, offering me a lot of mentors and a lot of additional help. Um, in all fields of my life, such as um, career-wise, I want to be like, like a UX UI designer. And so he has like all these connections to these people and it's just been amazing. Um, on top of that, it's also been really helpful in developing a, a growth mindset. I think during the pandemic, I really struggled with uh, my mental health as well as just like uh, connecting with others. And so being able to just talk to like, like-minded people like me and learn about topics together, it felt like a very like nice classroom environment. And I really liked how everyone was just working so collaboratively and everyone was just so nice and welcoming and generous. And yeah, thank you. All right, thanks for sharing, Nathan. Kiara, Kiara, you're up. Uh, Kiara, actually, she trained at my dojo um, before Budo Accelerator was founded. And she joined our first summer program and has been continuing with the programs ever since. She was in high school when she started with us. And now she is a first year college student, a uh, first generation college student, actually. Yeah, so hello, my name is Kiara. I've been doing this program for quite some time now. And as you've seen in my video, you were able to hear about the many benefits I've gotten from this program. So one other thing I would like to touch upon is the, basically like the connections I was able to make with other students who are my own age within this program. Um, I think especially during the pandemic programs that we had, it was really helpful to be able to talk to other students my own age going through the same situation and being able to just talk with them and get to know more people in a, in a situation that I didn't think it would be possible in. And even once we started training in person at the dojo again, it was just really amazing to see these people in person, to be able to train with them and to form so many connections with them throughout the training. So like now we're all super close friends at, this do at the dojo now, whenever we train. And it's just really amazing to see like a growing community of teenagers at the dojo. We're all able to help each other out whenever we're like preparing for key tests and just getting to know each other better through all the training that we're doing. Thanks, Kiara. So I see a few questions in chat. Let me quickly see if I can address uh, these. Okay, so Charles Harris was asking, how do the demographic figures compare with other martial arts? Is this specific to Aikido? Uh, we don't really know exactly. So certain studies have been done uh, on martial arts in general. Ours, we, um, we focus specifically on the Aikido community. 
and our data was sourced from probably the largest survey that's ever been done in the history of the art of Aikido. Uh, for other martial arts, I'm not exactly sure, but I believe that uh, certain arts like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and MMA um, have been increasing or rising in terms of, of popularity in the in the recent years. Let's see here. So Laura Hackle, you'd love to know how we go about measuring these things, time management, goal orientation. So we've um, we've looked at a bunch of different measurement instruments. There are some great like pre post uh, program measurement systems that are used specifically to measure workforce readiness and social emotional learning. Um, so we've we've um, experimented with a number of these and, and use some of these tracking systems. Jacqueline wants to know, was our survey US centric or, or uh, global? It was global, actually. A lot of the data that we showed here, we just filtered it down for, for US data, but we, we do have uh, global data as well. And um, let's see here. Linda wants to know, how did, pro how did students learn about our programs? Uh, some of them learned about our programs on social media, some of them from school or friends. Some of them came from dojos. So for example, uh, the spring program that we ran earlier this year, we partnered with three, three dojos, uh, one of which is Grant's Dojo, who I believe is here today. And so they brought in a bunch of, of students from their existing dojos. Thank you, Grant. Your students are awesome. So they come basically from educational institutions, from community partners, and from online slash social media maybe now we can kind of switch gears and talk about a exciting new project or program that we have been working on we're super proud of what we've accomplished with our high school student programs and some important leaders in the education and nonprofit worlds also think we're doing something pretty special and one of the results of this is a new collaboration with university of california irvine UCI is one of the 10 UC schools, which together are the most comprehensive and advanced university system in the world. So now Budo Accelerator has formally partnered with the most comprehensive and advanced university system in the world to run leadership programs built on a foundation of Aikido. So this is very, very exciting for us. And our direct sponsor and collaborator is Michael Denon. He's known nationwide as a leading innovator in developing support programs for first generation college students. And not only is he sponsoring the program, he thinks what we're doing is important enough that he's actually taking the time to co-teach classes with me. So he steps away from sort of running the undergraduate division at UCI, which is 30,000 students, and comes into a classroom of 13 students to, to help teach our, our program. And this is our focus. We're working with first-generation college students. Um, these students are all first in their families to ever go to college. A large percentage of these come from low income backgrounds as well. And these students really are a beacon of hope for our society. They come from low opportunity backgrounds, but they're high performers and they are scrappy enough that they made it into a university when the odds are stacked against them. They're a super diverse bunch and they bring important perspectives to the table. But they do face major challenges. One thing is that almost two thirds of them are employed. So they are working while they're doing college. Um, one of our students told me the other day that their freshman year, last year, they were doing six hours a day of classes on Zoom and they were working eight hours a day full time at the same time to be able to support themselves, um, their education and even their families. And a lot of these first gen students struggle with family issues as well. Um, almost across the board, nobody in their families could help them kind of get through all of the application process of getting into college, the financial aid process, helping them understand what to expect. Some of them have to help their families uh, in addition to being a college student, either uh, financially or maybe with siblings. Belonging and loneliness is a significant issue for a lot of these students as well. And of course, almost all of them have financial aid debt. And the unfortunate statistic is that 33% of these students drop out within three years. We believe at Budo Accelerator though, that we can equip and empower our students to face these challenges and prevail. And this is our first group of UCI students, lots of young women. And in fact, the gender balance numbers are almost inverted, like the exact opposite of the larger Aikido community, which I find interesting. And I'm not sure exactly why within, you know, the, the sample size is relatively small with this group, um, but lots of, lots of young women, which is great. 
Our overall mix across all of our students is about 60% female. For our programs, um, we've adapted our programs for a university setting in some important ways. First, the students actually earn academic credit for our program, which we're super excited about. And they'll be taught physics through the lens of the martial arts by Michael Denon, who also happens to be a physics professor. And also for our UCI programs, we expanded our focus on workforce readiness. Uh, we think this is really important. First, because two thirds of them, they're already in the workforce now, like right now. And uh, we think that they can benefit from understanding a little bit more how this stuff works. And secondly, because most of them are only two years away from entering the professional world, and we think we can better equip them to be successful in that, in that realm. And another cool feature about our program, um, we know how powerful it is when students can connect with the Aikido community. So we're using Uber and Discord to get students off campus and into private dojos. We think that this is really critical. It builds community and connection. It helps the students level up their skill and it brings new life and diversity into dojos. It's really a magical thing when you see it in action. And we're pleased to announce that Ike Extensions has actually awarded us with a seed grant to make this happen. So we're measuring utilization and average transportation costs per student. And we're gonna be using this data to create an optimized self-sustaining solution this is really important because if it works, we'll have a solution from one of the major friction points of getting college students into private dojos. So let's take a couple minutes and we can meet some of our new UCI students. So hi, I am a sophomore at UCI. My name is Erin Kim and I'm majoring in psychology. I found out about the Aikido, the Budo Accelerator program through an email sent to UCI students. And it's Better than what I expected, of course. Like when I first joined, I looked up what Aikido was. I didn't know what it was. There was a lot of not great <laughs> stuff written about it. Like they say it's for good for performance, but not for like actual like real life situations. But I found out that's definitely not the case. And what this program has really taught me so far, we're only on week three, by the way. We we have seven more weeks. We're not even halfway there, but I currently love the program. Um, I learned how to get out of my comfort zone. I'm used to staying boxed in. I don't like public speaking. <laughs> I'm, I get uncomfortable really easily. But like um, yesterday, Josh Gold-sensei and I, we were talking about acupuncture for some reason. And he was telling me how in Aikido, he's learned that like, there are uncomfortable situations, like when you're put in a pin, you're pinned down, but you know that you can get out of it. Or like in the case of acupuncture, it's uncomfortable, but it'll in the end help you. So that's happened a lot during this quarter so far in the Budo Accelerator. And I feel like I'm growing by conquering and going through those situations. Like, for instance, right now, I would never do a Zoom with like 50 people. <laughs> My comfort zone is like four people, but <laughs> so I'm not necessarily comfortable right now, but I know it'll help me after I'm done and it's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> so yeah, Budo Accelerator is really helping me to get out there and Aikido is a lot more fun than I thought. Like I'm actually considering, I think I will. I would like to continue Aikido even after this program. So. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Aaron, good job getting outside your comfort zone in front <laughs> of people from around the globe. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Linda has a question for you. What attracted you to the program? Um, and what are your what were you hoping or expecting to get out of it? Yeah, one big thing was that it's non-competitive. Like I don't want to be in a competitive sport, especially with the call like if I'm in college it's already quite competitive and there's a lot of stress from schoolwork so um, since it's non-competitive it's, it's a lot more relaxed and also I thought that like when I first heard about it I wasn't thinking about joining because I was scared to join because it's something new I don't know what Aikido is but because of that reason I decided to join to just kind of see what happens try to get over it and what was the other question? What I was hoping to get out of participating? 
Yeah, I was just trying to gain more confidence, be more comfortable around people, gain leadership skills, which I definitely feel that I'm lacking on. Yeah. Great, thank you, thank you. And Diego, welcome Diego. Diego's another one of our UCI students. Did you want to uh, chat with the group for a minute? Yeah, hi, my name is Diego. I'm a second year student at UCI. I major in earth system science and in the future, I hope to become a teacher. It's only been like three weeks as Aaron has stated, but I feel like I've learned a lot from this program, just like going to the dojo, like at least one time and uh, having gone to the classes like three times. Something that really, that I really like about the Aikido community is that they're so willing to help you learn because like once I got to the dojo, I did not know what to expect, but it's amazing to see how people are so eager to help you learn, right? Like it, it was kind of intimidating, but I'm really glad that there's that kind of learning environment. I really hope to take something away from that to kind of create that kind of environment in the future, like in my classroom in the future. Thank you, Diego. So I'm gonna quickly just jump back into a few slides and then I'm gonna hand over the virtual podium to Mark to chat for a few minutes. Our plan here is to make a big difference in these people's lives. And we want to do it in a targeted, scalable and measurable way. And we hope that some of these students are gonna become the next generation of Aikido instructors in our community. And if they do, they'll be the first generation of Dojo Cho equipped with formal leadership training and a powerful contact network. The plan here is to run these programs, make them successful. And after that, we would like to grow them at UCI. Uh, just at UCI, they have 14,000 first generation college students. So we think we have a lot of room to grow here. And if we can make it work at UCI, I think we can make it work within the UC system. There are over 115,000 first generation students in the UC system. And there are actually 11 million first gen students in the United States alone. So what I'm getting at here is that there's no shortage of students to work with, and there's no reason we can't scale up on an international basis to work with many thousands of young people. Now, some of you may be thinking that I'm crazy to be talking about doing things at this scale, but I'm here to tell you that I'm not crazy and that this can be done. You can take a look at Girls Who Code. This is a great organization and they've run programs for almost half a million students. They did it, other organizations have done it. Um, so I don't see why we don't have a shot at, at making this happen. We may never get quite as big as Girls Who Code, but this is the scale that we're thinking about. And hey, who knows? Uh, maybe we can even get bigger than this. And from a revenue perspective, I would just like to point out that our co-founder, Mark Tursek, who will be speaking in a moment, he ran a, a nonprofit 50 times bigger than Girls Who Code, 50 times bigger than this organization. Now, the Nature Conservancy has a totally different focus, but it's not like our team has no experience running things at large scale. So we aim to use Budo to impact society in a big way, and we will need partners to make this happen, dojo partners. And so this is the chance for all of us to do what we love, to do what we're good at, and to do something good for Aikido. So with that, I would like to hand off to Mark Tursek, who is my, my friend, a fellow Aikido practitioner, co-founder of Budo Accelerator, and uh, as chairman, my boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Josh. Um, first, let me say thank you to everybody on the call. Thank you, Aiki Extensions, for hosting us today. And thanks for all of you who have taken the time to join us. We always anticipated, Josh and I, that um, if we were going to have any success with Budo Accelerator, it would be because we'd be uh, welcomed by the Aikido community. And, and today is a great, a great example of that. So we really appreciate your interest, your engagement, and we hope we can count on your support. Thank you, Aiki Extensions, also for your, your uh, financial support. We really appreciate it. And let me also thank our students. It really does kind of warm my heart. Um, to see Budo Accelerator at work. And um, it's just, it kind of blows me away when, when I hear from the students. They're really enjoying the program. Josh shared with you the kinds of outcomes we're achieving, which we're proud of and are important. But another thing I want to emphasize is everybody's doing Aikido. So um, I think we also have the great opportunity to strengthen and sustain and, and take Aikido itself, the practice, the art, to, the, to a, another place if Budo Accelerator really goes well. 
Most importantly, I want to thank Josh. Uh, Josh is a tremendous leader. That's why I was initially enthusiastic about uh, helping him get started here. It's never easy to run a nonprofit. It's even harder to start a new nonprofit. And if that's not enough, it's really hard to start a new nonprofit, first of its kind, during a global pandemic. And um, it's extraordinary what Josh has accomplished. I, I hope that was clear to you. Um, he's run Budo Accelerator. He's led it with um, joy, imagination, tremendous commitment to the art of Aikido, of course, and real sensitivity and awareness of the kinds of things we can achieve. He also runs it like a business. We have good data that lets us know how everything is going every step of the way. If something, if the data disappoints us, we can go back and adjust and fix things. If the data is very encouraging, we can do more of that. Um, I think that's another thing that will really be some wind at our back. Um, I don't have much to add today personally. Um, yeah, I had a funny career in Aikido myself. I trained in Tokyo for about a year and a half. I did go to the dojo every day while I was there. And, and uh, Tada Sensei himself was my senior teacher. This was in 1979, believe it or not, 1980. Um, I didn't really appreciate at the time how fortunate I was to be training in his dojo in Jiugaoka. I never uh, intended to stop doing Aikido, um, but one thing led to another. And um, I kind of lost the plot, but got back into it. It's really been a joy, and I'm 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 really pleased that um, I can have a small role in in um, in giving back to Aikido. Josh noted, um, we're pretty ambitious about Budo Accelerator now. That's because we think we have enough data to know that it works. Um, this can grow, uh, especially if the Aikido community supports it. We can really help young people. Um, by doing so, we can also um, participate in, in the heart of the Aikido practice, the Nojo community. And so Josh and I have concluded we were responsible now for taking full, of, full advantage of this opportunity. Uh, there's a chance here to do some really good work. This, this um, program at UC Irvine is so exciting to me. Um, and it's just one way of many that we can, we can grow our impact. So I hope you'll all consider supporting us and helping us. There's a number of ways to do it. I think over time, most dojos can participate with us. I think it'll be great for the dojo. It will be fun for the people training at the dojo. Um, it's just fun to help people, as you know, and welcome young people into the art. We'll help though by providing a program so that we can achieve these outcomes that aren't always uh, top of mind in Aikido. So we hope your dojos will be involved. We hope you will spread the word. You hope, we hope you'll bring us good ideas and stay in touch. And then uh, it's my job as the chairman to mention this. We do have to raise money. Um, we hope we can recruit some people who love Aikido and are in a position to help us as generous donors, but every donation will help. And, and Josh has done a great job of building in a short period of time during a pandemic, a really good cadre of donors. Some are small donors, but you know every donor helps it's important too, because when we talk to prospective big donors, they want, they want to see that data too. How are we doing? Do we have supporters? How many, et cetera? Um, so I hope you'll stay involved. I hope you'll help. I know if you do, you'll help us a lot. Thanks to our students. Thanks to IKEA Extension. And most of all, I want to thank uh, Josh Sensei for everything he's doing. Domo arigato. All right, thank you, Mark, and thank you for joining us today. I I, I know your schedule is uh, crazier than mine, so really appreciate you taking time out of your Sunday. Um, okay, so let me start off. I see some questions coming into chat, so let me kind of start responding to some of these. Let's see here. Is there a plan to run these types of programs in other countries, and how can clubs outside of America benefit from this initiative? Good question. Um, our plan is to scale internationally and to partner with dojos uh, around the world. The, uh, the idea though right now, since we're sort of in a startup phase, is to test our programs, refine our programs, and build out the infrastructure that we will need to scale first. And then we will start to expand first within the, U in the United States, and then across North America, and then into, you know, into Europe and the rest of the world. But we want to make sure that we do this intentionally, and we do this um, in a 
you know, in sort of like a, a clear and professional way so that when we do scale that everything holds together cohesively. So this is sort of like the plan. And right now, I imagine that it will be approximately 12 to 18 months before we're ready to really start scaling this large. In terms of the, the model, how we might work with uh, partner dojos, we'll be talking with dojo chos and people who run organizations in the coming months to sort of get feedback on, on this. But the, uh, the initial plan is that you, if you're running a dojo, you do what you're doing already. Uh, you know, you run a dojo, you make sure that you have great programs and that you have a healthy uh, community. And then we can help bring new young people into your dojos. There will be leadership development curriculum, which will be layered onto or connect with the traditional Budo training that you're already doing. And some of that curriculum may be delivered in person in your dojos that um, you know we'll have sort of like training modules for for dojo cho to go through for that and some of the curriculum will be online some of it will be asynchronous so students can kind of go through it at their own pace and some of it will be synchronous where we may have live live events um, and things like that and the idea would be that students um, who come from families affluent enough to pay for the programs will pay for the programs and they will pay for memberships into your dojos. And for students who do not have the financial resources, then we will attach scholarships for, for them and uh, we'll work with dojos to, to, to make that happen. So this, uh, this is sort of like the, the high level plan. Let's see here. There are many communities that do not have a local UC. Is there any thought to encouraging more local um, CSU or junior colleges throughout California? Yes, yes, certainly. So we're working with high schools right now, and we're working with uh, you know kind of one of the UC, the major UC uh, campuses. But um, we do plan on being able to connect with and plug into and integrate with work that's being done at universities all across. North America and Europe eventually, and uh, with community colleges as well. Yes, so so that's that's for sure. But right now our focus will be okay. We're inside a major educational institution right now, so we would like to figure out how to make this as successful as possible. So we have a great model that we can then take that and sort of work on porting that over to other other places. Let's see here. How many students, Chris King wants to know, how many students have been participating in the UCI program? We are starting small. We're starting with a group of 13. And we think that kind of cohorts of around 12 to 14 is the right size. And um, the plan will be that we're now in the fall quarter at UCI with one group. We would like to continue with that group. And then if it goes well, later on this academic year, maybe we scale it up and add one or two other cohorts or groups. And as we get smarter about this and we learn how it goes, then we can continue to expand from, from there. Hi, Diane. It's good to see you. Diane's another one of our UCI Budo Accelerator students. I didn't know she was going to join today, but it's great to see you. Did you want to say anything to the group? Um, I cannot say enough how uh, Buddha Accelerator has changed my life in like three weeks um, up until now. You would not see me speaking in a Zoom call to 50 people, especially not around the world. Um, uh, I do have a script. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am unbearably shy and I'm always afraid of hurting or bothering other people. And uh, I just wanted to dive into something new. So when I saw the Buddha Accelerator through an email, I was like, huh, this is something new. Um, I always wanted to join a martial arts program. And then when I saw that I had to focus on leadership, um, I was like, okay, um, I do want to better myself. I want to become the person that I know that I can be, become the leader that I can be um, and become a, what I've been, uh, and I can feel that change happening. Um, as I continue this program, the Aikido community is so tight knit and so kind. And uh, I always thought, oh, the elderly members are going to be so uh, they're not going to be patient with me because I'm like a beginner. But no, it's the like contrary. They help me through it all. They make it a comfortable space for me to uh, learn uh, the the art form and um, uh, and to grow myself. And I result grow as a person, and I can see that in my other classmates uh, as well, who I can call my friends now. 
um, and they're also having fun learning and growing together. Um, and I, I'm really grateful for this community and I hope to continue Aikido afterwards uh, and hopefully be patient as well as um, help other students in the future. Great, thank you so much, Diane. You did great. <laughs> Proud of you, awesome. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, one person had asked earlier, um, very quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll respond to, like, how do we position these programs and how are we communicating about them? We primarily um, position these programs as leadership development programs that are rooted in the martial arts, uh, as opposed to just sort of, okay, this is an Aikido, you're learning Aikido. We flip it a little bit. So it's like, you're learning leadership development through Budo. And that's, that's how we've been talking about it. All right. Josh, since are we about ready to talk about next steps? Sure, that sounds before, great. Before, okay. as, before we go there, I, I just really want to um, acknowledge all of the students. Thank you so much for coming on, for sharing, for stepping out of your comfort zone. We're seeing the program in action through you and through your presence here and through your sharing and already seeing the empowerment, the leadership development, the passion for Aikido that's growing. It's just so special to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, wouldn't it be cool, everybody, I'm sitting here going, how cool to have had an opportunity to participate in a program like this when we were younger, <laughs> when we were your age. But what's really cool, you know, we're past that age. However, we do have the opportunity to participate by hosting programs, creating programs. One of the things that's so impressive, as Mark mentioned, about the program is the that it's so data-based. And that the research is being done, metrics are there, adjustments are made according to metrics. And it's also a basis to not only work to develop the programs, but to develop the sponsorship and reach out to funders and, and all of the above. So that's really impressive. And I think it certainly inspires me and that you're starting small, testing everything, testing everything during this period. And Josh has shared that it'll be about a 12 or 18 month developmental process right now until Budo Accelerator is really ready to scale. However, there are steps in that period for all of us that all of us can take. And so Josh, I'll turn that over to you right now in terms of what are some next steps for people to get involved? Sure, that sounds great. Next steps, one is you can join our newsletter and you can follow us on social media just so we can all stay connected and we have an open communication channel. Uh, we are on Instagram, we are on LinkedIn, and we're on Facebook. Facebook is not our platform of choice, but, but we're there. Um, so you can find us in, in all of those places. Please consider making a donation or sponsoring a, a student. And uh, the donation that you make will be like rocket fuel um, for building a new generation of young people in, in Aikido. And over time, it should, um, you know, the fruits will bear across all of our all of our dojos and the Aikido community. In terms of what to do, there was a, a question in the chat about like, hey, you know, what can we do to, you know, to to get ready to participate in these programs? We would love to have you participate and to become a Budo Accelerator partner and run our programs in in your dojo. Um, right now, as we are kind of testing and refining our programs and preparing to scale. The best thing that you can do is kind of nourish your, your dojo, um, your dojo community. We're coming out of a pandemic. This is the time to rebuild your dojo, put yourself in a position of strength, make sure that you have kind of like good uh, diversity and inclusion policies in place in your dojo. You know, you've got all of your participation waivers, all of the stuff that you would expect a professional educational institution to, to have in place. And the last thing is, is that if you have young instructors in your dojo, people who may, maybe they're Nidan or you know, whatever, please give them the opportunity to, to teach and maybe even consider getting on the mat and taking their classes. Um, because the, the teachers who may be in their 20s or 30s, these are the folks who can really connect with young people in high school and college. And so, I encourage you to give them the opportunity to, to grow and um, take the spotlight a little bit. So yeah, there are definitely action steps. And I see uh, Lisa Sensei, thank you for your question. You know, people are hot to trot, want to get involved. And there are preparatory steps to doing that. 
which Josh can, since we will go into more again, we'll, we'll host another program um, not too far out from now so that uh, we can get into more than nitty gritty. But, you know, we're all in this together, helping to build Aikido's future. And Aiki Extensions has been creating these programs called uh, Roundtables, Passion in Action. So I think we all share just a tremendous amount of passion for Aikido. And it's how do we take that passion into action in all kinds of different ways, which we're all doing in different ways. And certainly Budo Accelerator is a very exciting and bold, ambitious opportunity to get involved in, in some new ways and new levels. And I think the pandemic has opened up the opportunities for us to train what we call an Ike extensions, a train across borders, across the borders of geography, styles, uh, rank, age, all of this. And so that's what's happening. And we are rejuvenating Aikido, building a new generation and opening up a lot of new opportunities. Uh, Laura Sensei, I wanted to introduce our other IQ Extensions board members here. One is Susan Dutton. Thank you so much for being here and all you do. And Laura Hale Sensei, if you are prepared, if not, uh, just to uh, talk a little bit about Mighty Networks, we have two more action steps that you can take uh, as a result of this program. So Laura Sensei, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, yeah, I would like to say a little about Mighty Networks. Um, as you mentioned, the pandemic does, uh, it's one of those problems that has within it an opportunity for growth. And so um, one way that we've grown in the past year, two years, I guess we're going on now, is to make use of this platform called Mighty Networks. And uh, Mighty Networks functions like a social media, but without all of the negatives that I think go with social media in that uh, you aren't being served ads. Um, I don't even believe they're tracking you on your data and it's completely enclosed within our group. Um, so if you join the iKey Extensions Network, what you have is a place where you can, you can post your own events, you can um, ask a question to the several hundred members that we have here that are from all over the globe doing Aikido. Um, you can learn about what we're up to in Aikido Extensions and other uh, like-minded groups such as what Josh is doing here. Um, so this members.ikeextensions.org is the way you can sign up and it is a free online network centered all around um, extending Aiki throughout the world. If anyone has any questions about how that all works, I'd be happy to answer them. Great, Great. Hey, thank you. So yeah, Josh, that's it. Hey, did you want to move on to the yeah. grant? Yeah, we're gonna talk about seed grants. I'm gonna turn that over to our president of Ike Extensions, Robert Ken Sensei. Um, yes, and thank you again, everyone for being part of this conversation. Um, the seed grant program and our most recent seed grant recipient is in fact, Josh Gold and Budo Accelerator uh, itself. Um, the seed grants uh, is sort of Ike Extensions recognition that we're relatively small as nonprofits go. Um, but we want to have an impact. We have a little bit of, of money coming in from, from our members uh, who pay an, an annual fee. And so we want to make as much difference with, the, with those funds as possible. And where we think our seed grants fit um, is if you've got a good idea and want to get it to the next level, um, the, the, sort of, the sort of level where you have proof that it works, uh, and then you can take that proof and go ask for, you know, much more funding from larger philanthropic organizations and foundations and such. We're, you know, RC grants are, are sort of that interim step for you. Um, it's a 10 question form, uh, easy to, you know, you can just click to it from our, from the webpage that you sort of um, see the address for right here. Uh, just ikextensions.org slash seed grant. And we, you know, at every monthly board meeting, we, you know, we will take a look at any new applications and and hand out funds accordingly. The the seed grants are five hundred or a thousand bucks, so it's not big money. But if that's enough to get you started at something, we want to hear about it. And on that note of seed grants, so far we have uh, helped to support an Aikido with Veterans program. We've helped in Tampa. Uh, Meredith Abel Sensei has started a program with Muslim girls and women in the mosque. And uh, there's a I believe, kind of an emotional intelligence program through Aikido up in Canada that we're, we've given a C grant to a parents and kids Aikido program. So there aren't any limitations. We are so excited to be able to, to help in, in a small way with Budo Accelerator and 
you know, part of the components of how does a program work, transportation. So that's that qualifies, right? Um, and they will be able to transport kids to programs because that's really a big issue and then do some metrics on that, see what a difference it makes. And then you can go to bigger funding or um, transportation companies and say, hey, help us out. So, you know, open your minds. There are so many possibilities and seed grants really are just that, seeds. Um, Ike Extensions really has, we've we are been around for uh, about 25 years now and acknowledge our founder, Don Levine Sensei, a blessed memory, but who has inspired so much. We, of course, created the Middle East Aikido program. We helped to start Aikido in Ethiopia, uh, the Peace Camp Initiative that Robert runs and uh, that is bringing Palestinian and Israeli youth together. So, so many possibilities of ways that we can use Aikido in the world. And it could be locally, it could be nationally, it could be globally, it really doesn't matter. But uh, everything that every one of us does is important where we all wanna work together on our messaging in Aikido. I thought it was very interesting to hear Erin, I think it was, talk about, uh, she read about Aikido and eh, it didn't sound so cool, but you know what, it really is. So what that said to me is we already know that we need to pay attention to our messaging, what we put out there in the world on our websites, on social media, so that Aikido is more appealing and that Aikido can serve its function in the world, which was really laid out, I think, by O Sensei, which isn't necessarily to be MMA, but certainly is to be an empowering uh, force for peaceful power in the world and to make a difference on the planet. So uh, we hope you'll continue to be involved Budo Accelerator is a 501c3, so is Ike Extensions, and that means that your tax dollars are, their tax, your donations are tax deductible, and there are just so many ways to continue to be involved, and as we come out of the pandemic, to rejuvenate Aikido, rejuvenate our dojos, and to really continue the uh, uh, Aikido as an evolutionary art and art of peace, force for good in the world. So um, that's what I have to say. Justin, say, would you like to... Um, have some last words here? One thing I would like to note is that um, for us to grow, we do need funding and all the support that we can get, um, you know, we, we need. This is, um, this is a huge opportunity for us and for the art of Aikido. And, uh, you know, money is, is fuel for us. So if you are able to make a small donation to Budo Accelerator, that's fantastic. If you're able to make a larger donation, that's, that's even better. And I know that a lot of folks on this call are dojo shows. You are running your own dojos and we are just coming out of the pandemic and all of your financial resources and energy are going into bringing your dojos back to life right now. Um, I, we get that and we respect that. But if you are a student in a dojo and you're a professional and you're, you know, you're doing well, um, please consider sponsoring one of our students. And um, you can go to our donation page and you can put in a monthly donation amount and consider putting in, you know, what you what you pay for your for your membership or your tuition, so that uh, a young person who doesn't have the financial resources to um, be able to practice Aikido can now do so, and you will be empowering that person and helping them develop as a leader um, and as a professional. And then when they get into the workplace, then I imagine they will pay it forward and do the same thing for the for the next generation. So. Um, there we are. I also wanted to, to take a moment again to just thank everybody for joining and taking time out of their weekend today, whether it's uh, the afternoon for you or the evening. Um, and uh, for the students who had the courage to get up and speak in front of all these people on Zoom, I'd really like to, to say thank you to all of you guys. And for the Budo Accelerator team members as well who are, who are on the call.